As I said, Parliament's back last week before uh, the, the May break. Let's go now. now. Now, let's go there now for the headlines. Trudy McIntosh. Australia's lowest paid workers could be in line for another wage boost backed by the Albanese government. For the third year in a row, Labor will argue the minimum wage should keep up with inflation without naming a dollar figure. Last year, workers were awarded an 8.6% rise. It's not expected to be that high this year, with inflation dropping down to 3.4% in the year to January. We know that cost of living pressures disproportionately impact people on the lowest incomes. Uh, that's why we are enthusiastic backers of the low paid in our country. Business groups say the number needs to be much lower than inflation. Inflation is coming off and productivity has been incredibly weak. If you put all of those things together, we will be uh, making a submission, I think, of an increase of not more than 2%. The wage boost will kick in from July 1, the same time as the revamped Stage 3 tax cuts. But in its submission, the government argues the wages increase should not be moderated by tax relief. Another round of energy bill relief could be on the cards in the upcoming May budget. More than 500 households a week have fallen into electricity hardship since the 2022 election. The Treasurer has flagged more help could be on the way for Australians struggling to pay the bills. Well, that's under consideration. You know, we've made it clear uh, that there are a range of options available to the government, whether it's uh, another round of electricity bill relief or other ways that we could help ease some of these cost of living pressures. Prime Minister promised on 100 occasions to the Australian people before the election that he would cut power prices by $275. Will the Prime Minister apologise to these struggling families? He was a part of a government that had 22 policies but didn't land one. Support slides for Labor again in the latest news poll, raising the prospects of a minority government after the next election. Labor's primary vote dropped to just 32 per cent, now lower than where it was at the last election. The coalition support up to 37 per cent. The two-party preferred also narrowed Labor's lead 51 to 49. Meanwhile, minority government, the reality for Tasmania. The Liberals under Jeremy Rockcliffe expected to fall short by three seats. They won't get green support, so it's Jackie Lambie network or bust. What I want to see first and foremost is them putting Tasmania first. Trudy McIntosh, Sky News, Canberra. As always, on a Monday for his take, National Editor for the Australian, Dennis Shanahan. A very defensive government, I thought, today in question time, Dennis, on the issue of energy. Now, I'll get to that in a moment, but news poll shows, I think, why they're so defensive. That slide to a 32% primary, the lowest primary, uh, even lower than the last election, certainly the worst result for the government since the voice referendum and all the backlash we saw last November. I think you said this at the time, I certainly did. Things like that broken promise on tax, they don't always show up straight away in polling, but when you add in this whole continuing mess around the foreign detainees and and there's anger in the community now, palpable anger about record high migration. These are areas where Labor already has an Achilles heel with voters. Throw in cost of living, we saw stuff the other day about an increase in broadly power prices. None of that's abating. This is why I think they're hurting, isn't it? Uh, well, look, it's, it's always a mistake uh, to read a poll, uh, a change in a poll, as something that has happened, uh, you know, affected it in the last couple of weeks. Uh, polls have a very slow effect, uh, and we had, uh, uh, before this poll, a bit of an improvement for Labor, and you would hope so, or certainly Labor would hope so, after uh, uh, tax cuts of $104 billion uh, directed to lower and middle income uh, earners. So this was, you know, supposed to be helping Labor. But what we've seen is that there's a little bit of a, a rise and now a little bit of a dip. And we're actually looking at the suggestion we're going back into a decline or at least another levelling off at a very low level for Labor. So there is no doubt that this will be bad news for Labor. Uh, they are keeping at a level which it will not get them uh, to be re-elected in their own right. Uh, I made the point today in The Australian that no government, no first-term government since World War II, and that includes Robert Menzies, Bob Hawke and John Howard, has actually improved the number of seats it had at its first election. They all have gone backwards and they all had bigger margins than Anthony Albanese. Unless he can buck the, the trend of history and perform much mm. better 
than John Howard, Bob Hawke and, Men and Robert Menzies, uh, he is headed for minority government at least. That is staggering. That is staggering. It's interesting today, you know, I mentioned they were very defensive on the issue of energy. So, so the coalition's got nuclear on the table. It says it's going to announce potential sites. It's certainly not a small target strategy if they go down that path. Yet today the government spent almost all of, of their airtime trying to rubbish and talk down the coalition's push for cheaper power. Have a listen. The poster child for large nuclear reactors is Hinkley C in the United Kingdom, which has just come in at $86 billion Australian. $86 billion Australian. That's their genius policy to put downward pressure on prices. $86 billion a pop for one reactor and they want six. Let's bring on the debate. So I think it's telling, Dennis, when the, when the government's acting like the opposition, they're not talking up their own policy. It's never again mentioning that $275 promised cut to power bills. All it's doing, and he's a bad salesman as it is, but all he's doing, Chris Bowen there, is hyperventilating about his opponents. Uh, well, again, it's a difficulty for governments uh, when they are talking about opposition policy, even if they are attacking opposition policy, it means that they're not talking about their own positive policies. They're being negative and they're uh, highlighting what the opposition policy is. And a couple of little points there from Question Time today. At one stage, Richard Miles nominated where Australia is going to build a nuclear reactor in Derby in England to power the submarine. As well, uh, when uh, the, the Prime Minister was saying, oh, there's not one over there on the coalition branches, the seats, who would actually volunteer to have a, a nuclear power station in their electorate. Someone called out, I will bring it on. So what we're seeing is that the government is playing on the coalition's, the opposition's territory, and over a long period mm -hmm. of time, no matter how effective that argument is, there is going to be an erosion of the government position and a build of the opposition position. You picked up the same point that I picked up too about that spruiking from Mars. They don't like nuclear, but they're basically building a nuclear power reactor in the UK with taxpayer funds that will come back here and be put inside our submarines. I'll come to that a bit later in the show. Talk to me about Tasmania because I watched those numbers play out on Saturday night. The Libs are head Labor close but no cigar. Rockcliffe now, the current Premier, is trying to negotiate with what could be a crazy crossbench. Let's not read too much into it because it's Hair Clark. It's not a system that translates uh, to the mainland. But I listened to Jackie Lambie. She gets her supporter base from broadly the centre-right. She looked and sounded to me like Oakshot and Windsor back in 2010 finding a way that she can she can hang on to to say, I can't support the Liberals. She's using the stadium, of course. Where do you think this is going to go? Oh, look, I think that the Tasmanian election is difficult uh, to drew any sort uh, of comparison with federal. So I wouldn't go too far with that. As far as Jackie Lambie is concerned, I think she has developed into a shrewd politician. She's talking up her price. Uh, like uh, Brian Harradine, a famous Tasmanian independent who ensured that Tasmania got everything, she knows her political survival and the political survival of her party at a state level in Tasmania depends on looking after Tasmania. I wouldn't be surprised that she will get the best deal she can for Tasmania, for her party, and end up in a coalition uh, with the Liberals. The other side of this, of course, federally, is Labor can take no heart from it. Again, like the, own, the federal uh, primary poll in news poll, very low, too low to get into government. But at the same time, this also demonstrates for Peter Dutton the weakness of the state Liberal Party machines. Uh, Western Australia, Victoria, Tasmania, these are areas uh, where the state Liberals are not performing well. They lost a, a by-election in South Australia on the weekend. And yes. this is a weakness yes. for Peter Dutton federally. Yes, there are problems there for Labor federally, but I think that Tasmania is a demonstration of a warning 
to both sides.